hold your breath. Look away. Can't you see? Come with me, and you'll be in a world of. I want to get online. I need a computer. Launch countermeasures. I'm completely operational and all my circuits are functioning perfectly. No problemo. What is your major malfunction, numbnuts? Welcome to the party, pal! Four years of film school for this? <laughs> now, button, button, who's got the button? Oh. All right, another episode here of the production meeting. I'm Clint Morris. Uh, across from me is Seattle's own James Gregsoni. Hey. James, how What's are up, you? guys? How are you? Hey. I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Uh, and of course, uh, all the way from Vegas. And he's actually just uh, rescheduled his Celine Dion uh, cover concert to be here, Gabriel <laughs> Campisi. That's right. <laughs> hi, how are you? Good, good, good my friend. Good. Good. good to see you. Good to see you. So, Celine says hi. Great, great, fantastic. <laughs> hey. um, now we've got a we've got a special guest today. We last week we briefly touched upon uh, you know film and films and filmmakers that have had to reshuffle their plans for for their films that uh, have been affected by the pandemic and the lockdown and everything else. Um, largely those that were originally due for for theatre release. Uh, one of those films is uh, the Dinner Party, a fantastic. Uh, and, I, and I'm not just saying this because I'm the publicist for the film. It is truly a fantastic <laughs> film. I compare it to a movie that came out a year ago called Ready or Not, which was just a fun horror film that knew exactly what it was. This is the same kind of thing. And, uh, and, and the man behind it, Miles, Miles and I have worked for, 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 together for several years on several films. Uh, Miles, of course, has had to kind of rejig his plan for the release of the film um because you know all the theaters and multiplexes have, have have closed their doors for the for the time being um and um and accept the fact that this film is going on demand um and and just put as much behind it and and behind those platforms the home entertainment platforms uh as possible instead so we wanted to get miles on just to see you know how he's feeling about the, all this you know the disappointment of not having the film play the big screen um, and, and, you know, and, and how things have changed for him as a result of, uh, this fucking shit flu that's going around and, and has screwed filmmakers and films over. Um, yeah. you know, I, I, look, I guess my, I guess miles, the, the thing, uh, we should say is, is that, um, on demand is seeing a huge spike. And so coverage is going through the roof, not only, um, for media on these films, but, in terms of people watching it, uh, at films at home. They're, they're, they're seeing a lot of films uh, at home. And so you've got just as much chance, if not more chance, that people will see the film now. That makes sense? Yeah. <clears throat> One of the things that um, I've talked about with my team and uh, on various podcasts and with film journalists is the fact that uh, one of the things the pandemic has done with regard to the film industry is to level the playing field. Yeah. Uh, because the fact of the matter is whether you're a big studio film, mm -hmm. whether you're a small independent film like ours, yeah. uh, you're facing the same obstacles. You are. You, you are very likely not to have a proper theatrical release. Mm -hmm. uh, you are, you are facing the reality that your release will be uh, online cable VOD, you know, um, Blu-ray DVD, you know, ordered, available on Amazon, whatever it might be. Um, and that is heartening to some degree. You know, Clint, you and I have talked about, we talked about the possibility, and we, I talked about this with our distributor, of uh, drive-ins mm. and uh, some independent films like The Wretched, uh, which is an IFC Midnight production, uh, really, were, they were very, very savvy and took advantage of that coming out of the gate yeah. Um, and, and kudos to them for mm. having that kind of foresight. Drive-ins are on to the fact that they're the only theatrical game in town now, mm -hmm. however, uh, and they're charging uh, very, very steep rates. Mm. So, um, 
we we had to just face the reality that hey, this is going to be uh, a streaming release. This is going to be a cable VOD, uh, Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, Fandango Now, all the usual suspects kind of release, and to put everything we had into that. And the fact yeah. of the matter is, look, uh, I know that uh, Lindsay, my wife, and I, my my partner in art and life and crime. <laughs> misdemeanors mostly but that was you uh, <laughs> <laughs> we uh, uh we have spent a lot of time uh, here in being under shelter in place order in new orleans um for the last couple of months watching and consuming online content whether mm. that's on amazon or cable vod or netflix or or whatever it might be we have literally watched the entire marvel catalog from front to back in chronological order. Um, and, and so I, I believe that, that there is a, a need and a hunger for content right now. I mean, the way I try to spin it in, in, in a sort of glass half full kind of way is that, uh, hey, maybe people are, have run out of content. They've, they've yeah. now seen all three seasons of Ozark and, and they're looking for something new. Yeah. Uh, and, and maybe our, our <clears throat> film is the ticket. So yeah. that, that's the way I'm, I'm trying to think about it. And, you know, I have to admit, and I, I, I understand that this is in no small part, thanks to the, the immensely hard work of you, Clint, uh, we're getting as much coverage uh, on this film and maybe even more coverage yeah. uh, than we typically get, <laughs> even films in which we do a, a theatrical release. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm heartened by that fact for sure. Yeah, and I, and I, believe, and I believe in the in the next couple of weeks, you will see... Uh, a plethora of of reviews and and even more just be and, and if only because and and um you know not to be um i don't want to you know kind of put tickets on myself here uh, but because you know we have been pushing this film very hard but we've been pushing it very hard as a theatrical release right up until probably 48 hours ago when people would start asking so is this coming out in theaters on friday and i would have to be honest and say look, no, it isn't coming out in theatres, obviously, with things going on, and, and you know, they assumed as much. Um, but the fact that it was uh, going to be a theatrical release told them, okay, this is one we should probably bother with then. Uh, we're right. seeing outlets request this title that normally wouldn't request a genre title. And we have probably 10 to 12 films this month that are all in the same uh, you know, genre, all, all, all horror films. This is the one that they are requesting because it's the one that was going to go theatrical. So they want to see this one above all else because it must be better in their opinion. There's still that stigma, uh, if you want to call it that, that uh, you know, a, a film that's, that's going you know, direct to DVD or back in the old days, you know, direct to VHS or direct to video <laughs> mustn't, be, mustn't be as good as that thing that's showing on the big screen. So there is a little bit of that, especially from the old guard. So... I think that has helped a lot in the promotional campaign of being able to push this as a film that uh, is due to hit a theatrical or due to hit theatres if theatres are open. Um, and also, I do believe uh, it is a film that is, uh, besides one or two reviewers, it is a film that a couple of people see it and the media are a bit like sheep, as we know. Uh, they love it. The word starts to spread. Um, right. and, and, and I'm finding that, especially in, say, in the last 24 hours, as we get closer to the release of this film, more and more interest. Uh, and I believe some of those positive reviews that people are seeing, um, people are, others are picking up on that. And, and, and yeah. yeah, the, uh, the sheep are headed this way. So that's a good, that's a good sign. And, uh, but, you know, I think for you, I think this is, this was a, a big project for you. Um, yeah. and, and you had hoped that this might be, the big ticket and, and, you know, change things and uh, put you in another league and, and it still might. Um, but I guess having to take theaters out of the equation has kind of, uh, you know, stung a bit and, uh, you know, knowing that, you know, you, you won't be showing in the little male theaters or, or any, right. any chains and so forth. Um, and, and, you know, the, yeah, that, it, that's gotta be uh, disappointing, but in your opinion, does this film, uh, work better on a big screen. Not that you, you know, have much experience in it, but well, I, I mean, I can say that um, we spent a lot of time thinking about the visual aesthetic, of this yeah, film, the look of this film, and I, I'm really proud of the cinematography and the production design and the costume design 
uh, of this film. Mm. And um, that is thanks, of course, to, to an incredibly dedicated, creative, uh, energetic, um, just crackerjack group of people led by my cinematographer, Michael Williams, a production designer, Julie Tosh, and her art team, and, and of course, Lindsay again, who designed the costumes. Wow. So yeah, I mean, it is, it, it is frustrating that it, that it largely won't be seen on a big screen. I mean, it might be seen on some big screen television, um, but you <laughs> yeah. know, we, sp we spent a lot of time thinking about sound design on this film as well. Mm. Um, and in terms of score, opera plays a large role in this and the way that opera was weaved into the score uh, uh, by my composer Clifton Hyde. And we spent a lot of time thinking about, about that and how that uh, fed into the narrative. Shall we begin? Bottoms up. So, um, yeah, it's frust frustrating. This was, we, we were going to do a event, real events in Los Angeles and, and the, these sorts of things, which mm -hmm. I haven't done since, um, you know, early in my directing career, you know, going back to my first or second film. So, it, it, yeah, I mean, it's frustrating. But mm. uh, there's a lot of frustrating stuff going on in the world right now. It, it is, hope, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you just hope that... Um, the right people find the film and that the and that it that you know that the film lands that people get it that people embrace it and i think you know the vast majority of the reviews i've read and you know i don't care what anybody says filmmakers read reviews i read them all mm -hmm. I read them carefully because <laughs> i want to know and, and i mean i want to get better i, I want to know what works i, I want to know what people think doesn't work yeah. um the vast majority of the views, or reviews and the responses that we received have been overwhelmingly positive and it's heartening and it's humbling. And, and you know, yeah, you, you get that occasional outlier who's, you know, wants to trash your, your indie film and, and uh, you know, they're, they're empowered by their Rotten Tomatoes certification status or whatever. But, um, no. <laughs> but I, but, and, you know, and that, you know, Clint and I have talked about this. It's, mm. This is very frustrating because, you know, the Rotten Tomato certification process, right? I mean, you have, we, we have probably gotten, I don't know, Clint, what, 14, 15 glowing reviews yeah. from yeah. genre sites, yeah. um, right? And I think of those 14 or 15, one of those critics was certified. Rotten Tomatoes yeah. certified. That's right. One of them, one. Mm -hmm. And so that, that goes, he called it a grindhouse masterpiece, Louis mm. Proyek. Great, we, we'll take it all day long. Yeah. Uh, uh, but that, but of those fourteen or fifteen reviews, that's the only one that was right yeah. Made a that's right. And some of these Why? sites are good sites. That's it. They're, they're, yeah, so, they're good, solid sites with readership and good readership and and followings, which which is you know is puzzling. Then why Rotten Tomatoes doesn't uh, you know give them the tick of approval to join up? You know, it, it's I don't I don't understand it either. And I've got friends that are critics and so forth, and and you know they've they've tried to get on there for years. Um, I, I'm guessing they just closed the gates, you know, a couple of years ago and said, there's too many of you and, and the rest of you can stay out and, you know, sh shout about your films to your friends, but that's all. So I don't know. And I get, I get mixed uh, signals as to how important Rotten Tomatoes is. I mean, I hear, well, your film has to have at least a Rotten Tomatoes page, mm. which all of our films do. But then if, if, if you get at, at least primarily negative reviews by Rotten Tomatoes certified critics, does what does that do for your film? I mean, I know as a film goer, I'm guilty. Uh, it, when you know, if I'm on the fence about whether I'm going to see a film, I go to Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's what's the percentage on Rotten yeah. Tomatoes? You know, mm -hmm. I don't think of going to a site like I, I don't know, gruesome magazine dot yeah. org or, or whatever who gave Same. us a lovely review yeah. or horror news dot net dot net who gave us a lovely review. Yeah, uh, yeah. I go to Rotten Tomatoes. That's right. Uh, so, so I mean, it it as an independent filmmaker, it's 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 exceedingly frustrating because I think the other thing that a lot of these critics don't recognize is <clears throat> the, the the real extent of the limitations that you're dealing with as an independent filmmaker. Mm. I mean, the 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 
the incredible limits uh, uh, on budget and time and resources and personnel that you are dealing with, the mountains that must be moved to just get an independent film made. Yeah. And I feel like if, 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 if some critics would, would acknowledge and appreciate that, they would, they would take a, a moment before they, you know, get on a Rotten Tomatoes certified website or publication and trash your independent film. Mm. Um, I think well, human- also, yeah, go ahead. I'm so, I was going to say at the same time too, it's like, that's kind of the culture we're living in is like, you know, the more we can trash a film, the more we can hate a movie, the more, you know, in film school, again, the first thing I learned is if it bleeds, it leads. And so uh-huh. it's like the more we can spread the guts of whatever project on the, the <laughs> yeah. pavement, look at this. And it kind of, I, I do agree with you, man. It's like, it's totally disenfranchising for especially like an independent creator. <clears throat> but I also think too, cause I'm in the process of being more on the producing end as well as directing and writing. And I agree. The, I got into this industry because I wanted to have a movie in the theaters. And now yeah. that that's no longer like really an option, it's kind of allowed me to relinquish the ego of like self-interest and mm-hmm. more of like, what's the quality of the story and how is it going to mostly impact the minds of the viewers? Right. Um, and so, yeah, but you also you killed it, man, because you're saying like we're on a level playing field yeah. and that mm-hmm. is also at the same time. That's, that's empowering. Yeah. Well, it's not, yeah. it's not everyone. It's not everyone who can get a movie in theaters. That's for right. decades. It's always been the, uh, the dream of every filmmaker yeah. growing up. Oh, I want to see that up there on the big screen. And, no matter what, that's never going to go away. There's something very special about that. Anyone can do a movie, but I think everyone ultimately aims for that. But things are changing now. It, it, the, the game yeah. is changing. So it's going to be a slight adjustment period, I think. But uh, I agree with everything you're saying. Even James, the, the playing field is leveled out with this yeah. new uh, technology and streaming video. Uh, mm. So, But I totally understand well, even- the, the – le- yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, even storytelling is changing, you know, living in Seattle with, you know, these protests that are going on. It's like now people have this. And so you're, it's like storytelling in and of itself is kind of taking on a new medium where I'm in, you're not just in one part of the protest. You can see different angles and different stories Mm -hmm. of the same story. And so, you know, again, it's like where the future of the industry is going unsure um but that dream still does remain i want a movie on the screen on the right big right screen. that's the ideal right i mean that's the, you, you make a movie to be seen on a big screen with surround sound in a single room with a this group of people it's a communal mm-hmm. experience that's that's what we make movies for right but james yeah. i think you're one, i think you're 100 correct in that maybe if there's a positive that comes out of this in terms of our It is a renewed focus on story, right? If you have a compelling story, if you have engaging, complicated characters, then people will come with you, right? Regardless of whether they're watching it on a 60 foot screen or, you know, this. I mean, I I hope people aren't watching my movie on this, but. Oh my God, I know. (laughs) I know. But. (laughs) <laughs> but, if, but if your story is compelling enough and your characters are compelling enough, they will come with you on the journey. And this is just a foyer. Well, you'll see. This house is so weird. Maybe we should just go. Stop. Stop. Sorry. How often do you have these dinners? These secret dinners. We did take the precautions we talked about on the telephone. Yes. No one knows we're here. Uh, in fact, uh, they think we're on vacation. It, it, it's always been like that from, from the beginning, if I might just add. And I think there's a few decades there where we have all this new CGI technology where there was a push. So the story was always there, but there was a big emphasis on what can we shoot? I mean, prior to CGI, you know, Star Wars came out. No, I'd never, I'd never seen that before. Now we've seen everything. You can imagine it. You can see it. So now how do you stand out? Now it's no longer the CGI. Now you, we need to go back to the basic, which mm-hmm. is that story. Even if we go back to George Lucas, Star Wars, one of my favorite quotes years ago, he said, uh, uh, special effect is a tool. Uh, uh, 
mm -hmm. for the movie. A special effect without a story is a very boring thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, Yo, and I just I just found out too in episode one when they did the waterfalls when the the ships are coming in the waterfalls mm -hmm. are actually salt shakers that right. you know, the salt yeah. pouring out. Yeah. And I was like, what the yeah. hell? Um, and you but really that, quick. Yeah, yeah it's a trip. Um, you said it too with CGI we've kind of hit this point of like photorealism, like Planet of the Apes style. And I watched a movie uh, about a year ago called Mandy with Nicolas Cage. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and like that to me was the perfect combination of taking the technology that we have now and yeah. then making like a really tripped out original story. Yeah. And I would have preferred to have seen it on the theater, on the screen, mm, sure. but it sufficed if I turned the, the you know lights off and, you know, sat in my room and just watched on my television but yeah yeah like you say like a hybrid having mm. both now is the quality mm. do you think we'll see less films released theatrically after the pandemic because of what's happened there will be a push to only have you know your michael bays and your your bruckheimer produce things kind of go theatrical the, the spectacles as opposed to the the smaller genre films like miles i think that was i think that was already happening before yeah. the pandemic. It was happening, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, I think I, I there think was that, a few that slipped through, though. There would always be the, yeah. you know, even through, you know, uh, some of the distributors we've worked with, you know, they would they would aim for, you know, small, limited theatricals on a few things, but less and less, definitely less and less in the past, you know, year to 18 months uh, and, uh, as as it, it's, it has become, I guess, not worth it for a, a distributor or a filmmaker because they know they won't possibly make that, make their money back. So they have right. I mean, I mean, you know, you go to you go to the multiplex. I mean, you know, uh, if you have a twelve or fifteen or sixteen or eighteen screens, uh, and you have a big Hollywood tentpole movie like, say, I don't know, Avengers Endgame. Mm. I mean, it's on it's on six, seven, eight screens. That's right. You know, and there's there's, and that make I mean that makes sense. They're selling a lot of those showings out. Mm. Um, but you're right. I mean. The thing that I, I always talk about with our distributors is, you know, does it really make sense financially to do a theatrical release? Mm. And, and if so, at what level? Five right. cities, 10 cities, 15 cities, 20 cities, you know? Um, yeah. Because the, the fact of the matter is, at, at our level, what that theatrical release is really primarily trying to do is to goose our profile yeah. Um, in the streaming world, it it's 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 meant to get us the attention of some critics from some major industry publications, mm -hmm. whether that's mm -hmm. L.A. Times, Hollywood Reporter, yeah. what whatever it might be, yep. um, so that some buzz is generated when we go into streaming cable VOD. We're not really thinking, hey, we're gonna make we're gonna make money on right. the theatrical. Um, so it's it. <laughs> It's a, it's kind of a sad state of affairs in that in that way. I mean, every yeah. once in a while, somebody you know strikes strikes gold. I you know I, I like the wretched, um, but uh, but it's just it's just really hard to, as an independent filmmaker de debating this you know catch twenty two of okay mm. I I, I want to be seen on the big screen. I want my film to be to to be out there and to, and and I want the major critics to review it. But at the same time, I know that that money that we spend mm. at, in, in theatrical is coming out of the back and it's coming out of our bottom line, it's coming that's probably right. coming out of our investors' pockets. And that's, that's, that's right. really tough. And way. that's when filmmakers come to us and they want to do a campaign for a film. Right. They're, they're planning to you know, open on 20 to 100 screens. And we've done a couple of those this year, just you know, huge releases. Um, and they've been disappointed that, that, that you know audiences haven't turned up for these for their their screenings and, and number one they'll do too many they'll book out nearly every territory um for a small film usually a no cast for small film now as i tell them the reward here is the fact that you've gotten your film reviewed and covered um you know in new york times la times reporter uh, holly reporter variety so forth uh who otherwise would not have covered that because they have their rule which is usually a you know, a three or four screen theatrical, uh, you know, uh, anything less we won't cover. Uh, so it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, as I like to say, uh, um, you know, in the best way possible, it's a necessary evil that you yeah. need, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter what they say about your film. The fact is it legitimizes your film. 
right. uh, and 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 you will you will get the coverage that uh, you can then show off to say Netflix and and other platforms. Uh, to get to get a release there, you know, look, look, these guys have covered my film. You know, yeah. we we are something. You know, one of the things I always say, uh, Noel Murray from LA Times has reviewed our last few films, and he's never really given us a positive review, but he always has some sort of like, well, Miles Doliak's films are always different or interesting. Yeah, so good. There's some little some little twist, and so uh, yeah, you know, I go on social media and thank Noel Murray every time he reviews one of our films. Good, because yeah. The fact of the matter is, the LA Times is reviewing our films. That, yeah, right, I, that means, that's fantastic, yeah. I, I, love, I love filmmakers that go out of their way to, to, to thank a, a film critic. And I, I, I've Absolutely. seen... Absolutely. Yeah, I've, look, there's only a small handful of them, I have to say. Uh, a, a lot will, you know, will, will complain that, you know, even if a mixed review comes out, that, hey, they didn't see my genius here. But... Um, <laughs> You know, I, I love seeing, say, someone, a filmmaker tweeting everyone that's written a, a review yeah. of their film, even if it's, you know, a, a savage review. And they'll just like, hey, thanks for taking the time out to, to right. check it out. Maybe we'll get you on the next one. And that goes a long way. That, that outlet sure. will, will then be like, well, what a nice guy. I'll cover your next film. Definitely. Mm-hmm. And as opposed to, you know, going after a critic and saying, you know, your, your, your family's gone, you know, I'm Bernard. <laughs> That's it. You know, hire, it. hire a hit man. Exactly. Yeah. I try to, I try to, I, you know, I try to save my complaints for you, Clint. Honestly. I know. Well, that, but, yeah. uh, but you get, get it mean, out I, of your I, system. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I finally had something to say on social media on Facebook today about a, about a critic that, that just savaged our family. Yeah. I saw that. Because, mm-hmm. his, because his review was, mean-spirited and cruel mm-hmm. and petty and and sort of had some personal attacks that were, were I just thought totally unnecessary right. I and mean, he had nothing constructive to say I have since learned that said critic is you know makes a habit of this this type of mm-hmm. drivel uh but yeah. but a, as a general rule I I do I go on I go on Twitter or you know wherever I can find these critics and these these outlets and I thank them for for what they do but I do believe that you know, I had a a very productive we, uh, on our last film, Hallowed Ground. Uh, we got a kind of savage review from a critic. I don't know if he would want me to say his name, but anyway, um, it wasn't it wasn't savage like uh, Mr. Moore's review, but it was it was pretty bad. Mm. And I went on social media and I thanked him for his review. It was he was a Rotten Tomatoes certified critic. I said, mm-hmm. I thank you sincerely for taking the time to review our film. And about six months after that film came out, he sent me a, a direct message on Facebook and he said, you know what? I really kind of had an, an awakening. Um, I, I was so snarky and I was so, I thought I was so clever for so long reviewing these independent films and, and you know, raking the filmmakers across the coals without realizing what it really takes to get one of these films made and the blood and the toil and the tears and the sweat uh, and the anguish and the hard work and the creativity that goes into these things. And I was really cruel to your film. Mm, and wow. and yet you had, amazing. You had, the, you had the grace to thank me mm. for reviewing. And he went back and actually changed his blurb on Rotten Tomatoes. It still wasn't positive, but, but it was much kinder mm. uh, than, than the blurb that was originally on there. Oh, wow. So, wow. Unheard so, of. Yeah, That's a once so in I, a once in a career thing, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So I, I, you know, I believe you're right, Clint. I mean, all that to say, I believe you're right. You know, Clint encourages uh, uh, his filmmakers to to reach out to these critics personally if they can, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and say, "Hey, I would love for you to take a look at my film." And yep. you know, I thought I didn't know if that was bad form or if that was nope. desperate or or whatnot. And the fact of the matter is, uh, when I've developed relationships with these critics. Um, you know, the, the end result is just better. And when, I, right. when I tell them how much I appreciate what they're doing, the fact that they're covering our film at all, yep. uh, the end result is better because yep. I just think it's a human thing, right? They, they have, they, now they know my face. We've talked on the phone, mm-hmm. we've had an email exchange or a Facebook message exchange or whatever. And it's just harder after you've done that yeah. to trash somebody's movie. It is. It is. human decency. Mm. You know? I, look, I find that even with, you know, we've, we've developed good relationships with a lot of critics, obviously, over the years. I find they're even, they even come to us and apologize if they give a, a mixed or negative review of something as if wow. we're going to be wow. affected and hurt by that and say, 
oh, guys, I'm so sorry. I just couldn't get into this thing and, and it wasn't for me. Um, but here's the review anyway. And I promise you know, if you don't want us to push out on social media, we won't. And I think that's because we've looked after the media too. We've, it's been a game of give and take and we'll help them out. And, um, you know, and, and, that's, and that's important. You know, we, uh, we treasure the media. I mean, I've worked on the other side myself, you know, in my, in my 20s. So I know how spoilt for choice these guys are. They're inundated every day with pictures to review films. They're not there to serve us. You know, they're not, um, they don't have to review anything. They, get, they can pretty much pick and choose whatever they want. And, and again, only cover you know, uh, Avengers films or event films. They don't have to cover any independent releases, um, but they choose to usually because um, there's a personal relationship there or, you know, the hooks, the hook is good. Or as someone said to me this morning, what a killer pitch That's what, on, on your film, actually. Um, you know, I, I came out with something different today just for, you know, one of our final review calls and, and, and decided to pitch a, a few that I've been trying to nab. And they said, okay, you've got me with that pitch, you know, and, you know, usually, you know, there's because it's you, Clint. Yeah, I'll do it. And, and, and that's, so again, relationships are everything. And I do believe, uh, I also think there's no harm in a filmmaker contacting a, a critic. If, especially if there's a little bit of resistance there to cover something or, or, you know, as a couple of major newspapers are doing now, they've, they've whittled down their review section to have a, only cover, say, three or four films when they were doing 11 to 15, you know, last year. And again, because of the pandemic, their budgets have been cut. Uh, but if you can annoy them enough uh, in a polite way, there's a good chance that they will cave in. And if, and if they're hearing from enough of us, so my team plus the filmmaker, chances are they're going to go, hey, you guys made enough noise. Okay, all right. And, and so you can, look, you, there's a fine line between becoming, uh, you know, excruciatingly <laughs> annoying uh, and just, you know, just being, you know, sending out gentle reminders. I mean, we generally pitch the same films every, say, 48 hours. So, so that's a lot more than what another firm might. They might just send out their, their, uh, their spiel at the start of a month or the start of a campaign, you know, review screen is available, interview opportunities and so forth. And that'll be it. They'll hope that press release kind of circulates and they get enough interest. But we make sure we've got enough time to do more than that and, and only cap our uh, clients at, say, 15 each month or 15 films so that we can spend uh, enough time, say, a couple of hours every day on each of these films and do more. And, 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 and again, push it out again if someone hasn't responded or if someone is on the fence about reviewing it. Go back again and just give them a nudge. You know, they might have simply just forgotten about it or something like that. And, you know, and we've had a few people kind of humorously laugh about, you know, how often they hear from us, um, you know, and, and we're like, oh my God, it's those October Coast guys again. And, you know, but, you know, that's, that's great. They know that we're, we're hungry and we, we, you know, we'll be persistent and we won't take no for an answer. Yeah. And I think our clients know that too, that, you know, I, this guy just said no, but don't worry, you know, we'll, We'll get him. And, and, you know, that's the kind of um, attitude to have and not just say, you know, accept, you know, sorry, it's a pass, you know, come back right. and go, you know, with another angle a couple of days later or show them something else from the film. Make sure you've tried everything until you take that. No, it's a pass. Um, and, and I've, I've even had some of my team going, I feel a little bit annoying. Like I'm really persisting on this one. Uh, I'm like, no, go for it. You know, that's, that's fine. They don't have to read the email. Remember, uh, right, right. And, and, you know, but usually they will because they do know us and they do uh, know that we have looked after them before. So they will generally read the email and they'll say, you know, sorry guys, it's still the same. You know, we can't fit it in this week and we will, you know, eventually accept that, but at least we know we've done everything we can possibly do for that right. film and that filmmaker uh, and the distributor. And, um, and, and, you know, that's, that's the bottom line. Um, and you will fill, find another outlet just as good to <laughs> fill that hole. So, okay, we didn't get you this guy. They just got no time this week. And, we know, um, and, and, and you know, we know that this is a legit answer, uh, but we've got you this instead. And we do that with a lot of interviewees as well. Okay, I know you wanted to get on this show. Now, they can't fit you in because they're booked out for the next month, but I got you something just as good on this one. And we'll always make sure there's a win. Uh, and I don't like finishing campaigns as Miles knows until I feel super satisfied that we've done everything we can possibly do for a film. So even if we've got hired for say a month for a film, I will keep instructing my crew, keep going until you 
get all those people we want to get um, because, you know, again, the relationship with the filmmaker and the distributor is going to mean a lot more than just, you know, getting an early mark. Um, yeah. You know, we don't care. I don't care what the film brings home or how much profit we're going to make or, you know, if there's 50 bucks extra in it for us, you know, if we finish early, you know, I don't, it, it, it doesn't matter. The relationship means more. And, and, and I give a shit about these films because I've done it myself. I've produced films. And the last thing you want to know, to see happen is one of these films to end up on the bottom shelf at Best Buy and no one's heard of it. And I've been there. So um, let's, you know, let's, let's make sure that these films have as good a chance as possible. And that, you know, we develop friendships and relationships with these people because they know we, we um, had their back, but um, yeah. In, in, so in short, I don't believe there's uh, there's anything wrong with contacting a, a, a writer or columnist because again, they might just have overlooked our email or forgotten and just need that, that nudge to know just how important it is for that film to be covered, especially from the filmmaker. You know, if they say, Hey, I'd love it. You know, you've covered all our own films, you know, mm -hmm. for instance, we were talking this morning about a critic that, um, you know, the budget has been cut on a, on a paper that, you know, at this stage can't review the film. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the critic has covered all of your previous films, mm -hmm. reminding him that, that, you know, that that's been the case might actually spark his interest in going into bat for that film right. and, and saying, Hey, no, we need to cover this because we've done all these other films. Let's just even do a quarter page or something on it. So again, um, finding, you know, finding your way in the back door any way you can. And, um, you know, I've been, I've been doing that since I lived with my father when I was 16. Uh, so, you know, if, 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 um, if, even if you've got a no, you know, um, it, it's not a, it's not a certain no. Um, that's, that's my, my motto anyway. You know, right. we're, we're not accepting your pass. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think, I think that's, that, that's an important thing. And, and, um, you know, I was going to ask Gabriel, having Gabriel having produced so many films um, in the same genre as as Miles' new film, horror films, and so forth. How important are reviews to a producer um, on these films? Is it important to a producer as much as it is a, a, a filmmaker or director? Do you do you think, or do you kind of stay out of that? No, it, it's completely important. It can make or break a project. What I call uh, audience awareness okay you know unless you have millions of dollars to do the uh, advertising mm. especially smaller films okay if nobody knows what like you said if it's sitting on a shelf in best buy at the bottom no one's heard of it truck who's going to pick it up mm. but if there's basically a little bit of buzz going on whether it starts with some news some reviews whatever you want as much information out there as possible on your movie mm. uh it, it, you know, short, short of, again, short of a multi-million dollar advertising campaign, uh, these reviews are everything. I mean, mm. it, it basically, you can have a great movie. It's an amazing movie. No one's ever mm. heard of it, and only a few people pick it up. Mm. Okay. <laughs> but take yeah. a while for it to get found, you right. know, if you don't have those reviews, if you don't mm. have that audience awareness. It, it's mm. absolutely important, completely important. Without it, you, you know, you're, you're not going to find much success. And, and can I ask, I mean, we had a... Uh... We've had a couple of clients over the past 12 months that have hired us to secure only positive reviews. So, which means going after those critics, we feel will definitely give that film a positive review. Uh, very wow. hard, very challenging. You know, a, wow. a lot of work goes into this because you can never guarantee that. Um, you know, especially when the films aren't, you know, winners themselves. You, you just, you right. just, so, um, would you rather have, you know, uh, a whole lot of reviews out there, even if they're negative, for a film or just have a, a couple of, you know, sparse reviews that are kind of, you know, no, okay. I, I, I think people can pick up on, let me give you a story. I don't want to say the movie, but I was involved with the movie a mm. few years ago and somebody else working with sent it out to somebody, mm. a reviewer is a small site, but they praised the movie. Like mm. it was gone with the wind or something. Right. But it was an absolute exaggeration. It was it, it was so fake. <laughs> like you can say, I don't know what the uh, what you know why what the person did this. I think he wanted to you know be on good terms with the other producer or something. It didn't work. I got so upset. I go, why did you send that out? I didn't know anything about it. I found it. I said, tell him to take it off. Why? 
because it was baloney. <laughs> mm. and, 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 and I'm sorry, it, it, it stood out as uh, baloney. Mm. So, so to have, go back to your question, of course we would want positive reviews, right. but, let, but, let, but they have to be real. That's right. Uh, okay, so if it's a bunch of fake stuff, let's just say, or, or well, we know this guy's going to give positive no matter what, well, yeah, I, that's preferred, but as long as it's fair, uh, if there's a few negative ones in there, okay, that's fine too. If, if you, people can pick up on that, uh, right. uh, if it's real or not. Because I've, cause I've oh, seen yeah. some, well, sometimes you go to, uh, you know, reviews on IMDb or Netflix, let's say, mm. Mm. And, and the movie comes out, you watch, you know, it's a low budget movie and okay, like you said, you know, it's, we can appreciate the effort, but it's not a great movie. Yeah. And you got 20 reviews, amazing, five stars. Everybody knows, okay, these are your friends. <laughs> which mm-hmm. is okay but you know it's not a it's not a real review it's no. it's, it's a very biased review yeah so the answer is real reviews uh, uh yeah. of course yeah. we would want positive yeah. but if even if they're mediocre if they're real and, and there's a positive that i prefer that than just yeah. a bunch of home okay. run positive no matter what okay I've, I don't look, know if this makes sense, you know. No, it does, and I've had to explain to to your filmmakers and producers sometimes that uh, look, you've got so many reviews. I know they're not great, but I feel that that's better than you not getting any awareness at all. You need this right, awareness. Yeah. It doesn't mean people might read something in those reviews that that you know the lights a spark in their interest and and they go hey right. that's that that sounds pretty like a pretty cool movie i don't care what this guy's got to say about it he trashes right. movies all the time right. i will pick mm-hmm. that up yeah. and well, well, people know that yeah it, 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 i tell people all the time other filmmakers i work with you're never gonna it's rare you're never gonna make everyone happy right you're right. always gonna have those negative reviews okay i had i had a uh, dinner with with a producer in los angeles not long ago and i had one of my movies come out this is years ago and i said Hey, how do you deal with that? Do you get negative reviews and bad comments? He goes, yeah, what are you talking about? And I said, well, my movie came out and da, 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 you know, a lot of positive, but man, some really negative things that stung. He started laughing. He goes, welcome to Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. You made it. That's yeah, what it you is. Made it. You made it. And that's right. You legitimized. It. it legitimized your film. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but people were taking a look. People were, were showing interest. It, your film is now real. You know, that, that's how I look at it. Right. You know, it's, it's doing its job. And, uh, you know, there's so many films that we, you know we do see turn up on on Tubi or Netflix or or Hulu, and you you have never heard of them because there was no marketing push behind them. There were no there's no reviews out there for them. Uh, you're not even going to consider that. You know, um, you know, and and I think uh, you know I, I guess it's back to our Rotten Tomatoes conversation. You know, are you going to just ignore a film that's that's got a bad Rotten Tomatoes score, even if you really want to see it because you love those actors and so forth? No, you're probably not. You know, it, 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 it's still uh, it's it's still of interest. You'll still pick it up. It's got reviews. It's it's real. You know. Uh, let, 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 let me let me add something if you don't mind, real quick. Mm. There's even the hundred million dollar movies, two hundred million dollar movies that get thrashed. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Batman yeah. versus Superman. Uh, I don't know a lot of the DC movies. Of course. Uh, super, okay, and they're slammed. Yeah. It's like, man, they've got you know between production and advertising got 300 million dollars into this yeah that's okay. right and, and, and my movie has better rating what yeah. <laughs> you know, mine was, yes i was getting trash but it's better than wow so yeah welcome well, to I hollywood it, it goes back to what what you what we were saying at the top clint which is mm. just to have a rotten tomatoes page yes. and right. a couple of legitimate publications yes review your film it, it, it it's tangible it's real yes. that's yes. right that's Th- right that's a legitimate film i would much right. rather be uh reviewed by the la times and receive a negative review than to not be reviewed and not to by be the reviewed. absolutely times. exactly absolutely. You know, that's right and look if the la times is reviewing your film hey it's legit you're, it's got welcome to Hollywood. you've made it yes that's right yeah. that's right and look well, you even you don't hear Whoopi Goldberg service. complaining about, uh, you know, Sister Act 2. I mean, there's, there's a 7% score on Rotten Tomatoes for Sister Act 2. <laughs> wow, uh, see? Which, you know, if you think back, wasn't a bad film at all, you know. Uh, but it's, it's probably not, uh, you know, for the critics that, that, you know, reviewed that movie at the time. It wasn't for, you know, the, the 55-year-old New York critic. It was for the teenage girls. And again, right. probably goes back to what we were talking about, Miles, that, some of those people should be, uh, you know, uh, approved for 
Rotten Tomato certification. Some of those, Absolutely. those, those teenage bloggers and vloggers that would have given say sister act two, you know, a, a better review, just like they would, you know, another teenage film that's out now. You, you're not going to have the guy from the New Yorker, you know, uh, give a, a, a rousing review to a Disney channel film or anything like that. You're going to, you're going to find that from your teen critics and your youth critics right. and, 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 the, and the audience, you know, the, if you're not the target market, you're not going to, you're not going to enjoy a film anyway. I, I, I find, you know, even, um, even if you are a critic, you know, so yeah, or aren't. So uh, yeah, but, but, but uh, yeah, I think I interrupted someone there and it was either, uh, either James oh, or, no, no, it's, or, I was, or his mother was calling him for dinner. <laughs> yes. it's actually my mom it's, it's my mom's birthday today so happy hey birthday. happy birthday uh, birthday yeah. happy birthday she's happy birthday 30 years old you're sweet uh but she's 30 no i'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm 30 <laughs> um, no it was the point being too is like i mean growing up you know there's no there's no such thing as bad press and then i also have noticed a right. trend in the stars of today yeah. where you know we almost want to see a train wreck and we're almost mm -hmm. kind of drawn into the bad reviews mm -hmm. um, and so true. yeah i again i just am kind of like 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 you said you made it man you, you're in hollywood yeah. people true. are watching your stuff mm -hmm. i you know on an actor on an actor and i have a youtube there's a short film i did on youtube with like two million views and nice. me i'm the i'm the nihilist i'm kind of the, the weird guy that goes through the comments and you get to read all of the reviews, you mm -hmm. know, thousands of reviews, and you kind of just get a thick skin. And I think that's a necessity yeah. in this industry. Mm. Um, and hey, again, absolutely. Like, you know, yeah. And the love it's of a good. film can grow over time too. I think. A, oh yeah. You know, a critic's world will change their minds. I mean, James, you're in Twin Peaks. Look at what happened to Twin Peaks Fire Walk with Me when it when it premiered at Cannes in yeah. '92. They booed it out of out of the festival essentially, and and just crushed yeah. Lynch. And now it's considered a cult masterpiece. You know, and and those same critics are going back writing feature stories on how how much you know this film change their you know change the outlook of film and everything and you know oh. that, that film was just heavily panned uh, upon release and it was only the fans that were like this is this is great but you know 25 years later and and it's like hey you know we'll bow at the feet of uh, of you know the laura palmer biopic so well, some of the some of the greatest some of the greatest minds you know of our times were condemned and you know like even oh, yeah. art people do not sure. you know there are some I would even say some of the most thought provoking art is some of the most uh, harshly criticized. And then for all of you gentlemen, because I'm a, I'm a horror fan fanatic, yeah. you know, especially creating crafty horror that makes oh, yeah. you think and affects you, mm -hmm. you. You may as well be a magician. If you are able to craft that in a manner you that is across, sure. you're yeah. a genius. Yeah. yeah. You made a movie. Well, yes. the, I mean, what, I mean, look at the reception of the shining when it was originally released. Shelley Duvall won a Razzie for work. Yeah, acting. right. Wow. wow. Stephen King distanced himself from the film. Yeah. Uh, you know, True. or or a film yeah. like Blade Runner uh, when it came out. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> the critics were like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah. Mm. You know, they were yeah. like, um, and both of those films now are considered masterpieces of their genre, groundbreaking, That's right. visionary. That's right. You know, mm. but I I think maybe sometimes it's just an audience is not ready for a particular film or, or uh, the populace is in a certain headspace where they just can't, I don't know, they just don't get it. And, so, and, and, and that's, sometimes that's the film and the filmmakers ahead of his or her time. Uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but it's mm. very, you know, I mean, the David Lynch example being booed out of Cannes. I mean, yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, Are you kidding me with that? Uh huh. Um, but Yo, but he wouldn't be good. he wouldn't be the artist he is if he didn't get booed out of cans. Like, oh well, look, developed. you got to go for it. You got to go for it. I mean, yeah. I, one of the films that I, I have found myself talking about on the whole interview circuit for dinner party is Mother. Uh, oh yeah, Aaron Aaron Oxen, Mother. Okay. Yeah. There are people <laughs> who say that is an absolutely horrific, terrible failure of a film, and I and I'm not a hundred percent sure it's not, but but I admire. Aronofsky saying, I'm going to go for it. Yeah. Right. I'm, I right. am swinging for the friggin' fences. I don't care what anybody thinks. I, I, I got something to say right now and I'm yeah. throwing down yeah. the gauntlet. Mm -hmm. And so, and right. whether, whether the film is entirely successful or not, um, 
you see that passion. You see yeah. that just unbridled bravado and vision on full display. Um, and that's inspiring. Mm. Whether the sure. film is successful ultimately or not. Well, yes. One thing I've learned too with, in working with David Lynch was, you know, when I got cast, I wanted to learn everything about him and his work. And the thing that drew me to him was uh, meditation and how he's an avid practicer of transcendental meditation. Oh, I didn't know and that. My part okay. Yeah. And he attributes a lot of his surrealism to the fact that he meditates in this imagery, you know, in this, these feelings that come up. And, you know, my girlfriend and I became yoga teachers right after that show aired. And I'm, I've begun to learn, I've begun to accept the idea that you have to follow what that voice is in your head that is talking to you. You have sure. to follow that intuition. And then yeah. again, like forget all the haters, fuck all the haters. Like yeah. you have to just, you have to go through, especially you live one life. You know, right. if you're accommodating to everybody your whole entire life, are you really living your authentic self? Right. No. And you're not going to make everybody happy either. You have to do your, uh, there has to come a time where you commit and realize you're not going to make everybody happy. It's not going to happen. It's, I mean, it, it could, I guess, but yeah, it's and be sometimes rare. It's, fun to, <laughs> it's fun to piss people off too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's a good thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Sometimes you have to piss people off. Yeah. yeah that's right. Do. You do. You do. Yeah. It's <laughs> ruffles and feathers, but um, sure. very informative and, 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 you know, some, stuff to take away there and i think hopefully you know those listening um will, will will have gathered some tips too and especially in terms of you know not to take too much notice of critics but know that it is uh, a necessity to to get them so do a campaign please do a campaign on your film do not let it just disappear you know get as much awareness as you can and do not be afraid of contacting a critic especially if you if they've covered your films before or if you know you are a fan of that critic and just would love to see them write something or even just to say thanks for covering their film even sure. if it was a, yeah. a, a you know a fair negative review that they've given um and and again uh you know on on the theatrical side of things i think it's unpredictable what's going to happen in terms of um, you know, what films will get a theatrical release going forward? You know, when will theatres open for a start? You know, we still don't know that. Uh, you know, they're starting to trickle open a few here and there. And, and uh, you know, drive-ins will be the, the new norm for a while and may even make an even bigger resurgence than what they have. Um, but I think as long as, you know, we keep making, you know, good, solid stories, the audience will still discover those, whether it's on digital or DVD. Uh, not necessarily, you know, have, have to play on the big screen and, and, and a filmmaker has a chance of still not only getting their money back, but having a, a, a profile boosted so they can get that next sure. film going. Um, so there are wins still and we've just got to, you know, adjust, I think, to the times and, um, and, and know, you know, what's working now, you know, uh, might necessarily have worked, a, you know, a couple of years ago and vice versa. Right. Um, but um, I, everyone should definitely check out Miles' film, the dinner party. It's going to be yeah. on digital and Congrats. DVD by the time you, you listen to this. It, 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 is, it is a great film. And, you know, having watched all of Miles' films and, and, and being a part of, of a team, Miles, and, you know, I have, I have the freaking T-shirt here somewhere. Um, <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, it, it, uh, yeah, I would dry hump this film. It is that good. So I want you, I want you all to, you can quote me on that. Um, you're, you're not Rotten Tomatoes certified, are you, Clint? No. That, that'd the, be a great... Pu the pub a publicist. Uh, yeah, you can... <laughs> publicist you says, watch this thing. Um, <laughs> but um, we usually end each show just by chatting about what we've just watched. You know, just uh, giving other filmmakers a bit of a, a, bit of a howdy. Um, you know, uh, uh, those that need it, you know. So, um, of course, we're going to get straight to, you know, um, what... Michael Bay has done. No, um, uh, <laughs> Miles, Miles, you did mention you've been watching, uh, you know, superhero flicks and uh, stuff from 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 Stan Lee's stable of of super smashes, uh, which don't yeah. need our plug. But um, but that's what you've been spending most of your time with the Marvel films. Well, I I uh, um, during the quarantine, uh, I I also watched season three of Ozark, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. Um, in the best season of that show so far. I have started watching uh, the new uh, Snowpiercer series. Right. I was, was wondering. That? Yeah, yeah. yeah. With W. It Diggs good? and Jennifer Connelly. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, I'm two, two episodes in. Um, and uh, I think it's pretty solid so far. Uh, 
something I've watched that I think is absolutely fantastic and devastating is uh, I know this much is true. The Ruffalo, mm. Mark Ruffalo drama on mm-hmm. um, based on the Wally Lamb novel right. mm-hmm. on which HBO. Is I, mm. HBO, right? Mm. Um, and it's it's dark as hell. And I, you know, I know this much is true. Okay. And Mark Ruffalo plays identical twins. Um, oh. And it's it's this kind of dark domestic drama. Um, em- employs a flashback structure that is, t- to me, done very effectively. Um, I mean, it's dark, like I say, it's dark. And, and, and with a, a lot of the horrible things going on in the world right now, you may not want to go there, but yeah, I, right? I'm, I'm, a, I'm kind of a glutton for punishment, I guess. <laughs> I, I seem to enjoy wallowing in melancholy. So Yeah, it's a distraction. <laughs> so I, I, I've really enjoyed it. I've watched three episodes of that show, and, and, and I've really, really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, great. And uh, I've been spending most of my nights actually revisiting – a show from about a decade ago, Friday Night Lights, which which ah, I, I loved so much, so and I and I, you know, introducing it now to my partner for the first time. Who again, like most people, you know, started out watching this show. I, I did too, and 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 said, oh, sports <laughs> sports drama. I don't know how this is going to go. You know, I don't know if I'll be able to stick in with this." Next thing you know, you're sitting there cheering them on. And in, in the, oh yeah, yeah, you know, you're like you know, go Riggins, go. You know, you're like, yeah. um, <laughs> and you're like, I have no idea what's happening, but just go, man, go, <laughs> run with that ball. Um, and two exquisite lead performances by Kyle Chandler. And oh Tom yeah, Hughes yeah. Series, yeah. really, really beautiful. Full hearts can't yeah. lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ma- amazing start, man. Get out of that football field and you show us the game. Yeah, <laughs> dude, your anger <laughs> dialect is hilarious. <laughs> 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 you're breaking from like one to the other it's great you should be an actor you're deli- I'm just delirious delirious you know we yeah, record right. these things at the end of the day when we're delirious um <laughs> when we've, we've, we've had it all with anything that's happened you know as usually well, happened in the past 24 hours well, i i have to i have to shout out though i um a film that i i returned to recently I actually had returned to it uh at the very end of the period in our semester i'm also a teacher of filmmaking at loyola in new orleans Nice. Um, uh, it, it was it was part of the screening series uh, in my directing class, and that is Spike Lee's "Do the Right Thing." Right. And, and when you when you talk about uh, a visionary filmmaker, a filmmaker being prescient or mm. prophetic, I mean those kinds of words are are thrown around a lot unnecessarily, undeservedly. But when I think about that, having very recently seen that film and then what's going on in our world right now and what what spike was on to in what 1990 mm. i think yeah mm. uh, right around there yeah i mean holy shit uh it, it go back i encourage everyone yeah if you if you haven't seen do the right thing in a while it's good Go yeah. it, go revisit. Do the right thing. It's it's right such now. a such a solid movie, in. and and really, yeah. you know, almost crystal balled. You know, yeah. the future yeah. and I, wow. on, on a different scale. I know, but uh, you know, I I watched uh, Mario Van Peebles' New Jack City again last uh-huh. night, and I hadn't seen that since you know I was probably seventeen or eighteen, and you know, at the time, you know, with the with the hoodie and you know the the wannabe rhymer myself. Um, yeah. but, you know, and so, it, you know, different, <laughs> different looking about it from, you know, a different perspective now, and it still not only holds up, but I think it really does, um, echo again, something that's, that's probably more, you know, topical and current now, you know, uh, crime and, and of course, you know, the, uh, the, the police and the, you know, everything that's going to the police, um, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, it, uh, it's such a great film. And I think, again, another filmmaker, you know, didn't quite uh, get to climb the notch and the ladder as, as high as Spike Lee did, but Mario Van Peebles, uh, a terrific filmmaker, you know, as, sure. as obviously a very talented family there. Uh, I've been working with Mario lately, so it was on my mind. It was fresh on my mind. I must revisit that movie of his. Um, and it's great. You know, uh, it is, it is such a solid piece of entertainment. Just, uh, you know, everything about that thing. And, 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 you know, I'd love to see more movies from you. I actually told him we need a sequel now because, you know, we, 
uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot more to talk about. You know, you could, uh, mm. you, you know, there's the, the, it's still current, the original, and it still holds up. But there's some things in there that could really, you know, it could really uh, bring to the attention of, of film goers now, and, and especially with with current events, you know, um, sure. be, it's really something to say. So, uh, so yeah, I, I, again, I've been spending a lot of time in in you know the 80s and 90s through lockdown and doing that yeah 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 and and, and i think it's because of you know what you're getting you know you're going to get a solid couple of hours it's 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 comfort food and and um i think it was the the golden the golden time for for you know film experience um it doesn't matter whether you're watching a you know a a steve martin comedy or a a revenge of the nerds film you know you still know you're going to get something decent they weren't uh throw away money grabs and times have changed and i think as miles said earlier we will see a return to those films that uh, Mm -hmm. more and more that will be more about story more about character and it won't matter if they're if they're you know a b comedy or or a genre film uh they will just have to rely more on that to sell themselves to the audience uh even to the critics you know it won't be as easy as just uh saying well I'm getting at a hundred screen theatrical, so I must be good. You know, so come see me, right. um, you know, because it doesn't mean it's, it's necessarily any good. And, and, you know, audiences are smart these days. So yeah, I, I, I love that. I love that time period. And um, so if anyone um, good, uh, that'd make a great double feature for anyone wants to watch, uh, you know, do the right thing in new Jack city. Um, oh yeah. Especially, especially at the moment, do it. Yeah. Well, I was going to add to that is uh, I think with what's going on in the world right now uh, and talking about story, I think over the next few years, um, we're either going to see, or if not, we should take advantage. And I, I think audiences need something. I don't know what the right word here is, but something deep. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of emotion going on. There's a lot of anger. I think, I think filmmakers can capitalize on that in, in a positive way mm-hmm. uh, to tell some stories, uh, yeah. um, to try to do some unity, try to yeah. do some, you know, yeah. like, like, well, what, 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 uh, Spike Lee did, you know, you know, uh, uh, open people's eyes. Let, 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 let's, uh, let's tell those stories, deep human story. You're raw human. We all bleed red, you know, and mm-hmm. we're seeing all this, all this, uh, violence going on. I, I really think there's an opportunity to do some, some great things. I, I think we're going to see it. And if not, I think that's something that us as filmmakers should, should jump on and do. I agree. I agree. What, what yeah, have you been I, watching, I think, Gabriel? Yeah. Well, sorry, James. You you go ahead first, James, because you were on the on the topic. So, wait. What are you talking about? I thought Miles was going to say something. Oh, I was just going to say very briefly, and then I do want to hear what James has been watching. Mm. I'm, I'm very intrigued. <laughs> uh, I, I was just going to say, I think I think artists and creators have a unique opportunity right now. I think art uh, and film, music. Uh, is as important or more important than right. it has ever been. Absolutely. In, in, in speaking to the masses, in transporting and penetrating and prodding and opening hearts and minds. And I Absolutely. think every artist yeah. needs, to, needs sure. to take that and embrace it and run with it and try in whatever way they can to make the world a little bit brighter with what they do. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and J- James, can I just uh, can I just say someone's in your fucking house, man? <laughs> oh, I know, dude. Someone is there. Someone is there, man. Oh, oh. So that's where. Oh, it in that case, I'm okay with it. Okay. Um, that's my little love over there. Um, we got to monetize fish. this video. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm. Put it on OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. Um, no, man. The thing I'm watching, that dude, the thing I'm watching, like, literally, I'm with you. I've been jumping back in the 90s. I watched Homeward Bound one day, and then I watched Liam Neeson in the gray the next day. And, dude, like, what a contrast. Uh, Double feature. (laughs) It's a driving double feature for you. God. Mm. The wolves in the gray, like, it's like watching the Velociraptors. Yeah. Just like, whoa. Yeah. Um, but I've been jumping back into the 90s, too. I watched Christopher Lloyd in My Favorite Martian, the Disney movie. Wow. I, I think that was one of the um, films I worked on, actually, back in back in my early days at Disney in PR, dude, that era. Disney. Yeah. Mm. Di- I've been watching 90s Disney movies because I got what? Disney Plus now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's like so weird. It's just so <laughs> weird. Like, mm-hmm. there's so much, there's like so many things that wouldn't fly in today's audience. Oh, right? yeah. 
Sure. You know, but it still has this like co- you know, cookie cutter kind of sugar right. quality to it. Mr. Magoo, like, well, the Leslie good. Nielsen, Mr. Magoo, yeah. I remember. We worked on that, you know, and, and I know thinking about that, that that probably wouldn't fly now either. Uh, you know, no. and just, just some, um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of those. A lot of butt slapping of young ladies. Oh, yeah. A lot of those films yeah. around 98, 99, yeah. Uh, yeah. crazy stuff that, that Disney probably wouldn't be brave enough to, to, to green light now, but, um, you know, different times and, and, you know, we could get away yeah. with a lot more then and, and, you know, not sure. as PC probably it's too. A, it's just a trip. Yeah. It's a trip going back into like the eighties and the seventies and the yeah. 90s and like how what do you can people get tell away- stories then? Yeah. And also what yeah. they could get away with then, but you know, you necessarily can't get away with now. I, I, I got to jump in there real quick cause I was just watching this on YouTube. They're not movies, but they're the Dean Martin roasts. Right. Okay. If you look, this is the seventies. If you get a chance, go to YouTube, mm. look them up. Unbelievable. The, 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 the racist jokes, but everybody's mm. laughing, but Oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm cringing when, I mean, they're, it's, it's, it's good stuff except when they get to there's a lot of racist, but they're not being mean about it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, they're not being, it, it's funny. Everybody's laughing, but I go, People no laugh. way would that happen today. It's, no. yeah. Anyway, they're not movies, but it's just like we're talking about the difference in time and era. Yes. Well, check out the check out the Dean Martin roasts on, on YouTube if you get a chance. It's yeah. Sure. Well, I, I guess my last thought too, really my last thought, and I spoke on this in our last podcast. I've also noticed that films are becoming much more violent and like a lot more like like Fox for like younger generations. Yes. And stuff yeah, like that. I agree. I agree. And I don't dispute that mm-hmm. if that violence and that energy is distributed properly through the yes. narrative. And like, that's right. why I'm in love with Quentin Tarantino because he gets a lot of slack for making violent films, mm. but he is like, he's like the Bach of violence. Mm. He just orchestrates it in a manner where you're like, so right. no. into I it agree. and it's engaging and it propels the story. And right. Right. Yeah. I, I can't wait to watch right. your movie. Mm. I can't and, wait and, to watch your movie. Miles. And, and I think, <laughs> And I, I do agree that, um, you know, on t- in terms of, you know, films becoming more violent and, and, and full of profanity and, and things like that, just for the hell of it, there are a lot of these that are aimed at, you know, the younger generation too. So I have, you know, a 12 year old daughter that, you know, knows more friggin' words than I do, you know, because <laughs> of these films that, uh, you know, now they're accessible to them. You know, these kids can, can, if they can't, if I try and block a film on Netflix, from her or a series, which I have, I, I, I blocked 13 reasons why from her. Cause I didn't want her watching that at, at this age. Um, yeah. then she will just go to YouTube and watch that episode. Wow. Yeah. You know, they can get around stuff. So, but also I know a lot of these films that they are making, uh, for a lot of these platforms are targeted, uh, and, and, or, or they're promoted in places where these young girls and guys, you know, whether they're 12, 13, uh, seeing them and saying, Hey, I have to watch this, you know, films like it, um, you yeah. know, which I would say, you know, probably not go there at, at 12, you know, at least wait till, you know, you're, you're 15 or 16. These are different times for a start. You know, I know I watched all manner of shit when I was 12, but, but now that I think I'm a father myself and, and, you know, I can see her even watching some of the you know, stuff that was you know worse than what we were into. Um, and, and because of their, uh, I think they are exposed to a lot more, um, uh, you know, they've got a lot more to, to deal with. So yeah, I, I, I've noticed that just in, in recent times that, that, that there are a lot of films that, are you know, aimed or, or positioned at these kids that, um, that, um, you know, we'll, 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 we'll teach them how to say can't five different ways, you know, and, yeah. you know, and next thing you know, you know, you've got a kid coming up to you and go, dad, what's a can't? And I'm like, yeah. well, um, yeah. Is that the same as, um, mom? You'd be like, like, you just, yeah. you'd be like, hey, watch Homeward Bound and just shut the hell up. Well, exactly. <laughs> you know, the thing is, they won't watch these, these, you know, we grew up with the likes, you know, the, the Spielbergian type stuff that we'd love yeah. at say, age 12. That She won't watch any of that. You know, she wow. said to me, when I blocked, when I blocked um, 13 Reasons Why off Netflix, she said, that's it. I'm going to block the Goonies on you. And, you know, that just <laughs> says it all. The Goonies yeah. is for me. It's not for her, you know. Oh, she, she, won't God, get, yeah. she won't be caught dead, you know, watching no. Sloth, you know, jump off a pirate ship. She's, she's wow. going straight for, you know, she's going straight for, 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 for teens bonking in the first five minutes of the show. She don't, she's not watching no, no, you know, you know, kids with treasure maps. I remember, yeah. you know, I remember watching E.T. when I was, well, I guess I was eight or so years old. Yeah. And it was, it was scary. 
It was. was yeah. It was. Yes. Yes. You know? I remember. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like that. Like the alien. He's he's ugly and funny looking, and he talks weird. And it, you know, it's yeah. and and it's just yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. right. And it and just and then you know, the government guys are trying to kill him. Oh and yeah. You know, he might he dies sort of. I yeah. mean, it's it's some harrowing stuff. It and was. It is, it is nothing compared right. to no, it is nothing. what the type of thing that is mo- marketed to kids today. Oh yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. 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 I couldn't. I couldn't get my. I, I would love to watch ET again now and sit down with my daughter and watch it. I know she's not going to watch it. She wouldn't dare watch ET. She saw wow. it when she was like three. <laughs> Look, I'm not going back and watch and watching that condom full of peanuts. And you know, there's, there's, you know, I, I saw that. I saw that when I was a kid. You know, I'm not going back and watching that now, Dad. That's 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 kid shit. You know, that she should, she wouldn't do it. Um, yeah. So I'm still trying to think of films that we can kind of meet in the middle on and that she would enjoy. You know, we found you know Stranger Things. Obviously, she's enjoyed, but yeah. I think Stranger Things. I mean, it's even more adult skewed than what. You know, but uh, if, the teens if, love it. These twelve-year-olds love it. But at the same time, you know, um, so that's Clint. That's your gateway to ET. There is no Stranger I, Things without ET. What I said yes. I you said know. I said all those films that they 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 bring up in in Stranger Things. You know, the, 80s. the, the yes, the eighties, yeah. the Goonies and the, and the Gremlins and Back to the Future and Last Starfighter and all that. These are the films you need to see, and you only need to look in yeah. one of your magazines or read one of your blogs to to yeah. see an article about what films you need to watch to get, you know, to, to educate in the strange, the stranger things universe. Um, right. But, you know, I think the thing is with these kids these days, they will only watch things that those on TikTok or, or their YouTube bloggers will tell them to watch. So if they have, you know, the girl on, on TikTok dancing to the theme song from good boys, uh, she's going straight to good boys, you know, uh, or a Seth Rogen, you know, go, oh, I've got to watch that sausage party because, you know, all yeah, the kids right. are quoting that. And, you know, I'm like, there's freaking two hot dogs humping in it. You know, I'm not, yeah. no, you don't need to watch that. You know, there's enough of, you see that enough in the kitchen. So, um, yo, you know, you know, you're an adult when like you're looking at the younger generations and you're like, what the hell's the wrong with the things you watch? Because that's mm-hmm. what I do now. That's what I do yes. now to like 20 year olds. And that's then right. that's what my dad did to me. Yes. And so I think it's all, it's just a it repeti- is. repetitive it is. cycle. It is. Well, I, I right. remember yeah, watching like... this last, this last uh, season of uh, Stranger Things, I guess it was season three. And yeah. they come out in the, in the Ghostbusters yeah. uniform. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, do, do any of the kids watching this have any idea what the hell is this is about? Mm-hmm. What's going on? Right, right. Have any mm-hmm. of them seen Ghostbusters? Yeah. Well, you know what's ironic is now one of the kids is is starring in the new Ghostbusters. Right. Yeah. Finn Wolfhard. Right. So obviously yeah. he had to catch up on it, but it would have been interesting to know if he had actually seen it at that stage. And, yeah. you know, no, no, no doubt he, he, he was sat down to watch Ghostbusters when he booked that job. But yeah, um, yeah when they're getting around in those suits, you know, uh, who knows what they were thinking, you know, that they were just taken off the guys from the local, you know, hazmat store or something. So, <laughs> right, um, right, right, right. Yeah, but it's true. Um, you wonder whether all these films that they talk about, I mean, they're even, they're singing the never ending story theme song in one episode. Um, oh yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. I, and again, I've tried to get my daughter to revisit that now at her age and she's like, Nope, Nope, wow. no way. You know, <laughs> but she will watch that scene from the kids singing never ending story over and over again. And I'm like, the film isn't half as punishing. Believe me as that, you know, there's a, once you see yeah, that dude, the luck dragon coming in, you know. Oh, uh, Fal- Falcor. Falcor, right? yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that, that dog movie dragon. scared the hell out of me, man. Yeah, that, that's what tur- I'm talking about. Turtle. Yeah. I the mean, turtle. When, the, when, the, the, yeah. You know? Oh, God. I was <laughs> like, what is up that? with that stuff with, with Never Ending Story and Dark Crystal. Like, oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> that new cool. series, did you watch? Did you watch the Netflix series of the Dark Crystal? No, I have not seen the new one. I no, 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 man. Genius. No, man. Stranger Genius. Things was on. Genius. Yo, get out of here. Are you not, are you not, I'm a Muppets man all the way through. Oh, oh I, I love, love the Muppets, Muppets man. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. So I mean, good. I love the original. The original is fantastic. Yes. And Perfect. was oh, yeah. terrifying to me as a yeah. child. Terrifying. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's The show is scary, too. I was sitting there and I was like, I feel like this isn't appropriate for kids, but let's just yeah. keep watching. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, times have changed and yet they haven't. You know, it, it is um, mm-hmm. it is interesting and um, but yeah, uh, yeah I, I think uh, you know I hope we've educated and entertained and um, and, and you know hope some people have got some stuff out of this. If not a really bad impersonation of you know the coach from Friday Night Lights. 
<laughs> Clear eyes, full hats, can't lose. Get out there. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and, 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 and we'll see you on the flip side. And Miles, good luck with the film. We're, you know, we're going to smash it. I know we will. And, thank you, Miles. And we'll be where, chatting where's about it. Be, uh, where's the movie going to play so everybody knows? Where's it going to yeah. so, uh, so it So originally... 100 theaters, right? It. Yeah. Uh, originally, originally, we had planned a theatrical for Friday. Uh, that's not happening because of COVID. Uh, so we're going straight to uh, online uh, June 9th, so Tuesday. Uh, and it will be available on all the major streaming suspects, save Netflix. So, you know, nice. Amazon, iTunes, Fandango Now, Google Play, uh, you know, Vudu. Amazon? Amazon? All the, Amazon, yes, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And then cable VOD. That's Direct right. TV. Uh, and then you can, uh, there'll be DVD, Blu-ray available for, for purchase on Amazon. So you don't have to go to Best Buy or Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you don't have to brave the elements. You can order it right from your laptop. or Perfect. Desktop. And I like to compare it to uh, Stranger Things. I think, kids, if you love Stranger Things, you'll love the dinner party. <laughs> <laughs> they're, talk they're, 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 they're talking about Thank it on you. TikTok. They're doing Thank TikTok you. dances to the, to the dinner party as we speak. <laughs> they're, they're, they're prepping their dances. You know, they're, they're getting their rehearsals. Oh, um, it, it's, it's all going to be happening. But yeah, man. Um, it, yeah, let's, let's make sure that uh, the folks see it. We'll be spreading the word. And... Uh, absolute pleasure having you on our little industry uh bizcast here my friend yeah, yeah. this was fun Anytime. gabriel James, so nice to meet you guys nice to meet you as Likewise, well good luck best of luck yeah best, best of luck, luck. Good to congratulations talk guys talk okay, soon, guys. Clint. Good soon. Night. Thanks. bye bye